in our midst. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, omnipotent, omnipresent and imminent. Having received the Holy Spirit in faith, Jesus was tested in the wilderness. He then began his ministry in authority. Immediately before his passion, he spoke clearly, without parable. Truly, I tell you, anything that you ask in my name, the Father shall give to you, and your joy will be complete. God said it, and I believe it. His words are true. We are not tested for testing's sake, or even for the sake of others, or for our own advantage. Within Jesus' bottomless love, he creates the very tests that have and would defeat us. He knows our weaknesses. When you receive salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, Jesus takes your hand and walks with you through all and everything that prevents you receiving all the blessings he has for you. He tests you only to enable you to receive him. He walks with you amidst all evil spirits, i.e. the spirit of despair, deceit, contempt, irritability, impatience, loneliness, longing, lack and many, many more. All and anything which is not of God's character, you can be sure, is not his holy will for you. With Jesus by your side, no evil spirit can attach itself to you. His testing is his great love in action, as he leads you in the paths of righteousness. For evil flees from his presence. At the point of rescue, you are terrified and confused. You know the Lord is with you, so why is evil encompassed all about? Because the world is the dwelling place of the evil spirits and their master is the prince of this world. As the Lord awakens the holiness within you, all unseen evil is disrobed of the fine clothing it walks about in to disguise itself. So we are rightly terrified as the unseen becomes seen. But greater is he who dwells within you than he who is in the world. So as they come at you repeatedly, they cannot attach to you. Like the wind over an aircraft, you are safe within the Lord's embrace. He knows this, and you are already safe and sound within his flock. He does not have to show you or walk with you for his glory. He walks with you because he loves only to enable you to receive him in abundance. He does not just say, do this and don't do that, as he did through Moses, to keep the sinful flock in a state of grace through obedience, regardless of the state of their stony hearts. He does not just say, do not kill, but he takes the violence from your heart. He does not just say, keep the Sabbath, but he puts a longing for his presence into your heart. He does not just say, do not commit adultery, but he puts desire for your spouse into your heart. He does not just say, love thy neighbour, but he makes them your kin in your heart. And on and on he heals you and fulfils his holy promises of old. I will give them a new heart and write my laws and statutes upon it. So he does not just say, do not give false testimony, but he shows you that deceit has no power over you. He does not just say, do not covet, but he shows you that discontent will have no power over you. So the greatest and smallest of evils are shown to be powerless over you as he walks with you and whilst you gain strength and faith in their ungodly presence. They roam always and everywhere, evil spirits. Mayhem and chaos are their lot, and they know not whither they comest or goest. They just consume and vomit. Not one of us could walk the valley of the shadow of death without being consumed. It is not possible. 
for it is written, we are all sinners. As Jesus now walks us through the valley, where we have already met our end, terror and bewilderment engulf us. We plead only and understandably to be taken to safety. But he smiles and bids you walk with him. If you did not trust him, you would not go, for you know what awaits you both. Both. Jesus' smile is enough for you to take hold of his hand and you trust him with your life and your dreams because there is no bridge behind you. And if you are like me, you probably tied a spiritual rope around you both just in case. Jesus saw it and knows your great fear. But you do trust him. There is no turning back as he has led you to a point of no return because he loved you whilst you were yet a sinner, whilst you were yet estranged from him, he loved you. It is not a sin to be a lost sheep who, when found bleeding and dying in the thorns, unable to move either neck or limb for fear of death, nevertheless kicks and bleats when rescued. It is terrified. It recognises its owner's voice, but pain and fear give governance to instinct. It fights with all the ferocity it can pitifully muster in an attempt to flee to the safety of its flock. Little does it know that its owner is overjoyed at having found it and that it is already on its way home. We have to own our inheritance, given to us through salvation and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, Jesus takes us through the wilderness, not to test us beyond our ability to cope, nor to see how far he can push us or how strong our faith is. He knows these things already. He takes us only to show us with our own eyes, as it were, that nothing but nothing can ever come between himself and us. We keep our eyes always on the Lord, for ungodly spirits encompass us. We live in their dwelling place. They belong here whilst we do not. We cannot escape their foul presence. But as we walk in faith and love, serving the one true God in our thoughts, words and deeds, then he is our shield. We are safe, free to love and serve without fear. We belong to him and woe to anyone anything or any spirit that tries to come between us. Evil spirits would not dare to even try, for they know God. Mortal men, unaware of evil influence upon them, are another matter. They do not know God and remain bereft of holy fear. Woe indeed to them, for they will try to separate God from his children and a merciless, dreadful fate awaits them. Only repentance and forgiveness will save them from his wrath. But he has declared this, Let sinners go on sinning, lest they repent and be saved. His wrath so great, even the chance of repentance is denied some. May all who truly repent get on their knees and pray ceaselessly, for then he might relent, and turn his ear toward your constant plea. May others still pray likewise for others. Forgiveness of sins through Jesus is not your right. For like the swine gulping down pearls that have landed in the pig's will, they would simply pass through. Forgiveness is a precious and holy gift. God gives you himself. Jesus tells us that his forgiveness is once for all and for every one who truly repents. He does not say that the unrepentant are forgiven, for that would make a mockery of his passion. Do not be deceived by extraneous teaching, but absorb yourself in God's word. It is categorically clear. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Without him, there is no life. You will not be saved by belief in any other God, be that yourself, a tree, money, 
false prophets, or indeed your own tears. Seek ye the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name. It will be the best thing you ever do. Seek, seek and seek. Ask, ask and ask. Do not stop knocking and asking until you receive. With the boldness of Paul, set about the Lord and demand your inheritance of love. He may humour your temerity and hear your argument. Just get yourself noticed in the king's court. If your heart is ready and your repentance true, he will hold a feast in honour of your return. He mourns your loss and what joy would be his when he hears your voice calling him. Give him the joy that is his and call him this very day, even if just to say, I have missed you and let God do the rest and may he bless you. Amen.